SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants is very good. So good in fact that I made an entire separate video detailing why I love the game. If you want more context on what this game is, go there, because here, all we're gonna talk about is business. Fellas, the plan is simple. There are 30 mini games in the console version of SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants. I'm going to rank all of them in a nice tier list because it's not like I have enough lists in my life. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and I will proceed to ignore you. Alright, let's get started. Yippee, there's one. Flippin' Out is the first audition you'll encounter in the story mode, and it's pretty good. It's somewhat marred by its long play time, which is a trend that you'll notice with a lot of these mini games. but flipping burgers to your partner so they can cash in points is such a simple and fun gameplay hook that it makes for an amazing starting point for what the game has to offer. Plus, the music slaps. A tier. Grub's good to go! Order Up takes the childhood dream of many and makes it a reality. Working at the Krusty Krab. Unfortunately, it feels about as disheartening as actually working in fast food. Interacting with the food tables is frustrating since your inputs don't process immediately. Meanwhile, CPUs get an instantaneous response, putting you at a disadvantage because you have flesh. I love the asymmetric design of this mini game, but the unresponsive controls make the food prep side far worse than the order taking side. Also, while the customers are eating good food, my teammate must be eating glue with how often they mess up the orders. C tier. Good concept, bad execution. Let's speed things up! The Bouncers is a solved game, as there is a set maximum score you can achieve. As we'll see later, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but what makes this audition one of the worst in the entire game is its pacing. The first minute is excruciatingly slow and saps the adrenaline out of the competition. I can't conclude that making the entire audition faster would solve things either, because it wouldn't do much for the human players, and the CPUs already play this minigame like they have a personal vendetta against Amazon. D tier. The bouncers deserves to be thrown out. Big burst in pants! A lot of these early minigames kinda suck, don't they? I like the idea of inflatable pants, since it's based on the iconic Lost episode of the show, but unfortunately, it's just plain annoying when you actually play it. It's too easy with CPUs and too chaotic with human players, and it really overstays its welcome. And while the music is really good, it's drowned out by, uh, this. Get ready to lift, beachgoers! I love the atmosphere of this audition, and I appreciate the big fellas putting in the good work, but this minigame is a cakewalk with human players and a complete luck-based gamble with CPUs. Whether you have the right weights nearby is purely up to chance, but the worst part is the AI. Oh my goodness. At silly or normal difficulties, the CPUs are colorblind to the point of requiring therapy. Normal difficulty Patrick threw so hard that I ended up running out of time on my gold story mode playthrough. If I want if I wanted to get timed out by a pink marketable creature, I would just boot up melee instead. Wait and see? More like wait and see tier. Hey, harpoon ye! Surf Rescue ends the lackluster Goo Lagoon level on a high note. Do you go for quick low scoring catches, or wait until the objects have drifted out further so you can reel them in for more points? If you choose the latter, you run the risk of someone else snatching your catch. I love a minigame that presents minimal risk versus high reward and does it well. My biggest gripe with this minigame is that the bonus beach balls that appear every minute award way too many points, but that does little to dampen this otherwise solid game. A tier, but good lord did they reach for that name. The best audition in the whole game. It's three minutes like many other mini games, but that time flies by in an instant. Slippery controls, bumper tires, intense music, a never ending barrage of curse words from your friends. Goo Gladiators is an all time classic. It's where boys become men. It is the final destination of Lights Camera Pants, and for good reason. The only downside to this audition is that its neck and neck nature makes it one of the lowest scoring mini games in the story mode, which is why Mrs. Puff's Boating School is arguably one of the hardest levels in the game, right up there with Sand Stadium. Eh, it doesn't really matter though. Goo Gladiators is still the GOAT. Gladiators. It's S tier. The faster we go, the faster I win. Pedal of Honor is Spongebob themed BMX, and yes, it's as cool as it sounds. There is a set maximum score you can theoretically achieve, but unlike the bouncers, Pedal of Honor has the breakneck pace and gameplay depth to justify such a fact. There are optimal combos you can repeat over and over, but mistakes can happen. You may wipe out and have to resort to shorter combos as you regain your speed. I adore this minigame skill expression, and the guitarist is absolutely shredding this too. S tier, dog. Zoom! 
home? Rounding out Mrs. Puff's school of certified bangers is a three course driving buffet. Three different race tracks, speed boosts, catchy music, drifting that only works half the time, the wall. Yeah, the drifting does kind of suck, but this mini game is way too good not to put an S here. And now some good music. If you wanted proof that Lights Camera Pants had soul and hard work put into it, look no further than Rock Bottom. It's prime fan service presented as an awesome rhythm game. Six great tracks, each character having their own moment to shine in a solo, the spotlight illuminating the winner, the crowd cheering in the results section. There's so much love and attention to detail present in this mini game alone that it's clear that it was meant to be the magnum opus of the game. That being said, there is a big glaring flaw to rock bottom and that's how it takes in your inputs. I'm not sure if it's because that my controller sucks or that I'm playing on the GameCube version or that I ain't got rhythm no more, but the timing window for your inputs is way too precise on the harder difficulties. Trying to play a Squidward on hard difficulty is a first world struggle, which sucks too because Squidward goes absolutely mental in the solo. As much as I'd like to give this audition an S tier placement for its concept and the clear effort put in by the developers, I'm gonna have to drop it down a peg to A tier. The input problem is far too much of a deal breaker for me unfortunately. Also Squidward's clarinet sounds like a saxophone for some of the songs, especially during his solo, which I'm sure upsets someone. Keep up, slowpoke. Jig on the Brig, it's a game of memorize and repeat, and it's, uh, it's alright. The most interesting part of this audition is watching the characters dance or squillium pound the daylights out of that jukebox. It's a relatively harmless beat here. Try to keep up! This audition takes Rock Bottom's input issues and cranks it up to 101%. Beats Me is an absolute turd on hard difficulty. The timing windows are way too strict, and if other players are sharing the spotlight with you, it becomes even harder to keep track of what you're supposed to play. Beats Me is also one of the auditions where the smart CPUs turn into enlightened oracles and repeat the notes more accurately than the future they're predicting. C tier. The actual song is pleasant, but the minigame itself is anything but. This'll be good as new! Machine running at half efficiency. Now Team 2, repair your generator immediately. Team 1, your generator is starting I still think it's an A tier. What can I say? I'm a sucker for excessive stress. Dirty the town, my bubble! Very simple concept, but it has a lot of depth while remaining simple and enjoyable. I love the sound of the bubbles popping, and if someone falls into a hole, they'll end up in a bubble as well, and you can pop that for a lot of points. It gives this audition a frantic and fun atmosphere while keeping all of the contestants in the same proximity, further encouraging the chaos. Undisputed S tier. Surface tension is like pizza. I'm pretty sure most people will find it good at the very least. She's all charged! Charge has one of the most interesting concepts out of every audition in the game. Basically, you charge up, light up poles, and earn points by forming triangles. Its gimmick of controlling territory and managing your recharge time is unique and makes for one of the more strategic offerings in Lights Camera Pants. Unfortunately, the minigame tends to drag on for a long time and the AI is notoriously terrible, regardless of difficulty. And uh, also, during my Gold Story Mode playthrough, this audition kept freezing my game. I was only able to play through it after I closed OBS. I adore the concept, but an audition that outright bricks the game doesn't doesn't deserve any placement higher than the bottom of B tier. I gotta give points for that sound design though. Jellyfish! Just plain fun. You catch jellyfish, then you literally shoot them across the map into your deposit to earn points. There's a good amount of gameplay depth here. Do you always fill your jellyfish net up to the max? Or do you catch in right before each time your deposit goes out of view and becomes inaccessible for a few seconds? Uplifting music and the fact that you can launch your jellyfish into someone else's deposit by accident help elevate this audition to S tier in my eyes. Stinking jellyfish. The idea is intriguing, but the actual execution is mediocre. The whole appeal of this audition is to catch multiple jellyfish in one go so that you can score combos, but as a result, Jellyfish Swish is one of the most bonus round dependent minigames of the bunch. Also, the AI is terrible regardless of difficulty. I adored this audition as a kid, but I'm gonna have to leave it in B tier. Although you could fix most of this minigame's problems by just making the jellyfish more frequent outside of the bonus rounds. Oh, and did I mention that music? Woohoo! 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 Ow! Ow! Ouch! I need 
that. Another goal for Icon. Uh, it's just 2v2 soccer with horrendous CPU goalies and too much downtime between goals. Once you discover the goalie's blind spot, it's really easy to rack up points. Also, the timer says 4 minutes, but since you have to go through goal celebrations and going back to your positions after every goal, you're gonna have to tack on a couple more minutes. C tier. FIFA fans, I hope you're watching closely because this is the future of your game. Oh no. The law! Okay, firstly, why is Dawn allowing this minigame to happen? Dude, we're literally freeing your prisoners. You can't get them back, you know. They're gone. They're out of there. Despite the weird logistics of a prison sponsoring a prison escape minigame, Breaking Out is awesome. It's fast-paced and frantic, but you still have to consider mitigating risk while pursuing reward. You could just dash from point A to B to score, but you could also lead the spotlight onto another player and watch them get apprehended. I also love the character voice lines that are exclusive to this stage. <laughs> Do I have to leave? I don't want to find. This is inconvenient. Oh, you It's fast, it's fun, it's not Dominion because it's actually good. It's a bona fide S tier. Move, Rock! Hey, yo, she wasn't lying. That Rock can fart. There are a lot of problems with Rubble Rabble. At higher difficulties, Rocks are harder to break. As in, Rocks that would have shattered in one hit on easy or normal take two hits on hard. This completely throws gameplay balance out the window, and combined with how terrible silly or normal CPUs are, you have one of the most frustrating auditions in the whole game. The fart rock is unironically the only thing keeping this rubbish in C tier and not D tier. We need to go up. Firstly, this mini game has Cannonball Jenkins as its announcer. Ooh, perfection! Okay, but actually, it's an alright game. I like how you can spill barnacles out of your bucket if your platform is unbalanced, and scraping the barnacles off the wall is satisfying thanks to the good sound design. This is probably the only audition in Lights, Camera, Pants that I feel could have been a bit longer. I'm gonna give it a B for... Barnacles! You're speedy! An asymmetrical 2v2 minigame done nicely. The battery player does rely way more on RNG than the rope climbing player, but it all comes together fine enough that I don't have any other gameplay concerns. The problem I have with it is that it doesn't really feel like it belongs in the Spongebob universe. Yeah, there are other auditions in Lights, Camera, Pants that don't really match the Spongebob aesthetic all that much, such as Charge, The Bouncer, Rubble Rabble, but none feel as jarring and out of place as Rope Burn. Remove the Spongebob characters and make the windows a bit more generic looking, and I can guarantee that you could see this minigame in like, Mario Party 8-2 or something. It plays fine, so I'll put it in B tier, but like, the dead center of B tier. That's teamwork working. Rounding out the story mode auditions is a speedrunner's wet dream. Get it? Wet. Cause we're underwater. Light up as many poles as you can on the building before time runs out. It's a simple idea hoisted to excellence by the swing mechanic and good sound design. This minigame isn't all that exciting for the final story mode audition though. It also technically has the rope burn problem of being somewhat generic, but this minigame gives us more Cannonball Jenkins voice lines, so that argument is invalid. A tier at the cusp of S, if not for the CPUs of all difficulties rolling a die to determine where they want to go. Nice shot! Darn it. This is the first minigame unlocked by clearing story mode, specifically for completing bronze story mode. An excellent balance of strategy and chaos that makes it a damn shame that it was locked from the start. I appreciate how you can choose to bump the pearls gently or hit them super hard, affecting their speed and trajectory. Mother of Pearl is an easy S tier. Its music alone could occupy a spot on this tier list. Bullseye! Another amazing minigame locked from the start. You have to clear silver story mode to get hook, line, and cheddar, but it is absolutely worth it. There's high intensity gameplay, there's risk versus reward, there's skill expression, there's catchy music, there's atomic wedgies. Easy S tier. Hook, line, and cheddar gives even Goo Gladiators a run for its money. It's that good. It's also a direct homage to the Hooky episode, which is awesome. Why wind? Why? Tethered and Weathered is your gold story mode reward, and it feels like a slap in the face. It's unfortunately another audition that suffers from the cool concept, bad execution curse. The fact that the other team can pick up clams that you throw down is brilliant, but it's the controls that kill the vibes on this one. The player in the air barely has any agency at all, since their range of movement is so limited limited and dependent on the ground player's position. You also can't directly influence where you're gonna throw your clams, so it makes this half the gameplay particularly frustrating. Unfortunately, it isn't much better on the ground. You basically just move left and right and pray that your partner isn't suffering from a severe case of microbrain. Both sides suffer, and I suffer. This mini game is a D tier. 
The only thing that was weathered was my patience. This stack is larger than me. Unlocking this audition is weird. Firstly, you have to beat gold story mode. Then you have to earn trophies in Mother of Pearl, Hook, Line, and Cheddar, and Garbage. Only then can you rob the Dutch. Weird unlock method aside, Loot and Scootin' is a good minigame. It easily has the most significant risk versus reward consideration baked into its core gameplay. You could go the safe route and bring back one gold bar at a time, or you could be a man and lose everything if you mess up. Just like a man would! I also find it funny how the only appearance of the Flying Dutchman in this whole game is his hand. A tier. You no good bumper! This audition is used as a two player tiebreaker and it's literally just rock, paper, scissors. The voice lines cut out a bit at times, yeah. And I do like how they use bubbles to represent the rock, paper, and scissors, but like. It's just rock, paper, scissors. I don't think I'm gonna give it a ranking. I'll still put it on the list, but like. It's just rock, paper, scissors. Take it, who cares? I'll be honest, I didn't even know this minigame existed as a kid. Which makes sense because it's used exclusively for three player tiebreakers. Two player tiebreakers can happen. Hell, it's guaranteed to happen at the end of the first story mode level, but a three player tiebreaker? How are they gonna settle that? Well, how about I just show you? Alright, I'll put you on the list, I guess, but there are a lot easier ways to get on lists, you know. And cut! That's a wrap, folks. That's the SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants Audition Tier List. Finished and available for further examination in the video description. If you disagree with any of the opinions expressed in this video, please send a 300 word email to your least favorite corporation and express your frustrations in your second language. I will not be waiting.